Okay, and we are live. Catal Amigo Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another news update. Live video coming to you today from Madrid, Spain, 7.35 p.m. in the evening. And uh, we're going to go through some of the main stories that have caught my attention over the weekend. And we'll also have a look at some of the comments that have been left on previous videos and uh, we'll also go into the chat section as we normally do. Now let's have a look at the first piece of news today. This one here, controversial statements by the Balearic Minister of Tourism that put British tourism in danger. British tourism is one of the main sources of international income that arrives in our country during the summer season and even the winter season. However, the UK's dissatisfaction with some statements made by the Balearic Islands tourism councillor Lucia Escribano seems to leave some question marks over the future situation that may arise. According to some British tabloids, such as the Mirror, the councillor said that the island was not interested in receiving low-budget tourists from the UK. Escribano claims that she never said anything of the sort, that they do want them to come, and that the British press has twisted her words, but the controversy is already in the air. Now, this uh, has made the press here in Spain... Uh, was flying under the radar there for a while because it became a story in the British tabloids, I think, last Wednesday, maybe Thursday, these statements by the uh, Balearic Islands tourism minister, Lucia Escribano, and uh, she was there in London because it was the Balearic Islands tourism fair or the Spanish tourism fair, not sure what it was, but she was there, and the British press, of course, interviewed her, and according to her, they got her statements wrong. Uh, she said a few things, but the British press interpreted uh, apparently what she said a different way. They twisted her words, as she said, and uh, that, of course, um, um, created some people to think that British tourists were not welcome anymore in the in the Balearic Islands, especially uh, the lower level tourism, people that don't have a lot of money to spend, go for the cheaper holiday to places like the Balearics. Now, let's have a look at one of the tabloid press outlets that came up that started with this story we can see here the sun i'll be off major blow to brits tourists major blow to brit tourists as mallorca looks to shut them out in summertime mallorca tourism bosses have revealed they are not interested in welcoming british holiday makers to the island next summer speaking to the sun at the world travel market in london this week so apparently she spoke directly to the sun lucia escribano director of tourism said we are not interested in promoting the island in summer Direct quote. Escarano said, We are limiting the number of beds on the island. We want quanti quality, not quantity. At the moment, we have 300,000 hotel beds and we want less, not more. If a hotel wants to make improvements, build a spa or a new restaurant, we will insist they remove hotel beds to gain permission. We are trying to decrease the number of beds in order to provide a better experience for visitors. We are not interested in having budget tourists from the UK. We don't care if they go elsewhere, Greece or Turkey. Of Greece and Turkey, all direct quotes. So I'm not sure how they got her words wrong because apparently that is what she said. And you can interpret this uh, as meaning that they don't want that low-end tourist from the UK, which, as we know, tends to get a little bit drunk at times and uh, run amok. So this is something that's been happening for the last year or so. We've seen over the last 12 months that various Hotels and restaurants in the Balearic Islands have put rules and regulations in place. Drinks limits, no more than six drinks per day at some of these resorts. Some places you can't wear your football strips anymore. You can't walk around in your Liverpool football strip or your Man City or your Man U football strip or your Chelsea or your, or your Arsenal football strip anymore or your Rangers or whatever. The uh, loutish behaviour is what they're trying to get rid of. So I think what she was trying to say there is that, yeah, we want people to come to the Balearic Islands, but we don't want the type of tourist that has been causing problems over the last few years in places like Magaluf, where we've seen that some of the behaviour from not only British tourists, but uh, people from other countries as well, when they get a few drinks under their belt, is uh, pretty dis disgraceful. I mean, I know it happens in other places around the world. It happens in Bali, at, in, in, at Kuta with Australians. It happens uh, in uh, the Balearics or Benidorm with people from the UK. It happens in the States, I'm sure. There are places there that also have this alcohol tourism. But what they're trying to do is lift the quality of the tourism in the Balearic Islands. And I think that's basically what she said. But um, 
the opposition party in the Balearic Islands has asked her to explain, because as we know, British tourism is around 21% of the total. Very, very important. So how do you distinguish? That's the question. Do you increase prices? We saw somebody the other day saying that, you know, drinks prices were double that of Benidorm. Food prices double that of Benidorm and other places here on the mainland. So maybe that is what they are trying to do. Squeeze that budget tourists out of places like Mallorca. Now, next piece of news, this one here. The government requests the third payment of 6 billion euros in European funds. The government has formally requested the third payment of the European funds next generation EU, which involves the disimbursement of a total of 6 billion euros, as reported by the Ministry of Finance in a statement. The amount of this second disbursement corresponds to the fulfillment of 29 milestones and objectives, 23 milestones and six, six objectives, which have been met throughout the first half of 2022. The satisfactory assessment of the, of the fulfillment of this package of milestones and targets will result in the disbursement of 6 billion euros, which would be added to the 31 billion euros already received, of which 9 billion was, were received as pre-financing and 22 billion corresponding to the first and second disbursement. More European money set to arrive here in Spain. And it's going to be interesting um, to see where this next lot is being spent. We know that uh, some of the money is being spent on trying to change um, the... Um, the uh, how would you say the um, the a lot of our older houses here in Spain when it comes to their uh, energy requirements, trying to change the way that they use energy in those places, making them more energy efficient. There's also a big push to get people to put solar panels on their roofs. Here where I live, there's a lot of uh, uh, street renovation works going on. They're putting in new bus stops. They're putting in new bike lanes. They're uh, making some of the sidewalks or footpaths more accessible for pedestrians. A lot of those things are going on. The opposition party here in Spain is saying that this, it resembles the fam famous Plan E that uh, a former prime minister here, Mr. Zapatero, uh, set up back in 2008 when the economy crashed and uh, a lot of money was put into infrastructure works in, uh, through local councils. The opposition, as I said, is thinking this is, this is something similar. But uh, the European Union, confident that this money will transform Spain into a modern economy. And uh, we, we will see in time if that is the case or not. So if you're in Spain and you, in, and you are noticing a lot of roadworks around the place at the moment where your local council is spending this European money, as they call it here, the European Union uh, Next Generation Funds, uh, let us know in the chat section, please, what they are spending the money on in your local area. Now, last piece of news. Let's have a look. Torrential rains cause flooding, flight diversions, and Metro and Cercanias outages or train outages. The torrential rains that have fallen in the last few hours in Valencia and Castellón on yellow alert for rainfall that has left 148 litres per square metre at Valencia Airport have caused flooding cuts in the Metro and Cercanias network and the airstrip inoperative due to the impact of a lightning strike with diversions and flight cancellations. Around 3.30 p.m. yesterday, IANA reported that the airport is now operational and there have been a total of 10 diversions to other airports and 28 cancellations. So torrential rain hitting that part of Spain, uh, Valencia, Castellón, parts of Catalonia, I think the southern parts of Catalonia, some parts of Aragon also badly affected. One person died uh, because a tree fell on their head. They went uh, went under a tree to look for shelter and a branch snapped off and fell on top of them. So unfortunately, somebody dying, but uh, severe weather in that part of the world. And uh, seems to be a, a recurring trend, this, that every time it rains heavily in that part of the world, the um, the uh, roads turn to rivers. So if you are in that part of Spain and have been affected by these torrential rains, again, let us know in the chat section and uh, let us know that everything is okay in that part of Spain. But it uh, seems to be, as I said, a recurring problem in that part of the Mediterranean coast. Next one, first comment of the day from Marcus. Being autonomo and paying it is a complete ripoff. They encourage private sign-off and go black. All right, they encourage people to go under the table 
go black into the black economy, get off the uh, Social Security, stop paying it is Marcus's suggestion here. Yeah, being an autonomo is only worth it if you're making a certain amount of money per month. If you're a low income earner, it's definitely not worth being an autonomo because the amount that you have to pay per month uh, if you are a low income earner is just, I don't think it's worth it to be honest. You have to pay a minimum of something like 200 and something euros. They're going to change that next year, mate, meaning that people are going to start paying according to their income. And apparently, low income earners are going to come out better. That's what the Social Security Minister has said. But the rest of the Autonomo Collective is going to be a little bit worse off with that payment every month. Uh, and uh, But they've signed off on it, apparently. And that's what's going to happen over the next uh, five or six years. The monthly payments or the monthly quotas are going to increase, eventually working their way up to be more in line with what you earn rather than just the minimum amount that you pay every month, which is around 300 euros, 294, 295 euros a month, regardless of what you earn. You can pay more if you want to put more into the system and hopefully get a bigger pension at the end of it out of it. Um, but the majority pay the minimum, and that's what the government is trying to uh, change to get people to pay according to what they earn. But uh, yeah, a lot of people being autonomous is a ripoff. Yeah, for a lot of people it is. They prefer to work uh, on a, have a regular salary coming in every month, working for somebody else, and not having to worry about those crippling self employment fees that people have to pay every month, which, as I said, are going to go up. So no doubt some people will get off or sign off and uh, go into the black economy and just start earning cash. Now, another comment, JN. Stuart, have you done a segment on the best, safest and secure telecommunications companies in Spain and their security ratings? If not, please, can you do a segment on this? Thanks for the suggestion, uh, JN. I'll look into doing something on this uh, topic when it comes to telecommunications companies here in Spain. We get quite a bit of chat on the uh, in the comment section and on the chat section here on the live streams. People asking what the best providers are. We saw the other day somebody was having problems with their data connection, but I think it wasn't related to the company. It was just a, a glitch in the system. But the big ones here in Spain, of course, you've got uh, Movistar, which is the former Telefonica, the, uh, the national uh, company that was privatized. They're the big operator here in Spain. You've got the French company Orange as well. They're a big player in the market. Vodafone is a big player in the market down here. So those would be the big three, I would say. Another one called Jazztel also seemed to be quite big. Uh, another one called Digi that I recently changed to. Lobster is also here in Spain as well, going for the expat market. And there's another... 15, 20 small operators that just use other people's uh, services. So for example, there's um, a lot of companies that uh, just sort of use the, the Movistar system, but they have their own prices. So they buy from us, they pay a certain price to Movistar, and then they resell those minutes or whatever it is, or the uh, data onto a, uh, another, onto a customer. And uh, some people tend to like those cheaper operators because they are cheaper. But if you want reliable service, you'd probably have to go for one of the big three or four, I would say, especially when it comes to your, if you want an internet connection, a reliable data connection in your phone and all of those things, one of the big three or four. But I'll look into doing a video. Thanks for the suggestion. Now, another comment. Let's have a look. From uh, Sal's. Spain has millions of flat-roofed buildings. Very few have solar panels. What a waste. Yeah, observation that uh, sales has made here in Spain, looking uh, on, top of, uh, uh, on top of the uh, houses of the apartments and not seeing many solar panels. The idea is that with this European money, they're, they're trying to change that. They're trying to make uh, traditional buildings in, big, in the big cities more energy efficient, putting solar panels on them. If neighbours can agree, because you have to get all of the neighbours on board when it comes to solar panels, so uh, that's what they're trying to do. Individual houses as well, but it is true, not many houses were built with solar panels on them. Even recent builds, you know, 25, 20, 20, 25 year old builds didn't have solar panels on them. Uh, and uh, But I think going forward, it's going to be something that you do see more of as Spain starts to take advantage of its uh, most precious resource, which is the sun. 
and uh, more and more solar panels will go up. But it's true, yeah, uh, the sun has been a wasted resource in this country for decades and decades because uh, a lot of these places could have been built with solar panels on the roofs, but they weren't for whatever reason. And as we all know, for four or five years here, maybe it was three, can't remember exactly, there was a, a tax on uh, people that had solar panels. If you had solar panels, you were taxed extra. So there was no incentive, basically, to put them on. And that was one of the problems as well. But anyway, that's all changed. I'll say a, a goodbye. Thanks to everybody for participating today in the chat section, for watching the video. Hasta luego, hasta entonces, uh, el martes. Hasta luego, adiós.